You know, I, I think a good majority of my walk with God has been like a wrestle. You know, I, I grew up going to church. I grew up going to summer Bible camps. I grew up going to Sunday school every week. I grew up praying before meals. It was nothing out of the ordinary for a Christian kid growing up. Things changed for me when I was in grade eight. I watched my grandma slowly die over the course of three years. And my grandma was my absolute best friend. Um, I watched my best friend slowly die. It was the hardest thing that I've ever gone through. You know when you have someone so important to you that you just, you can't imagine your life without them? I had to learn to live in that reality when I was in grade eight. November 16th, 2012 was the day I actually stopped believing in God completely. I didn't want anything to do with Jesus. I didn't want anything to do with church. Anything related to God, I, I was done. November 16th was the day the wrestle in my life began. That was, November 16th was the first day I experimented with drugs in grade eight. Truthfully, those few years after my grandma passed away were a blur to me. I remember disregarding my faith completely. Um, I started rebelling. I started to get in a lot of trouble. I started to disobey my parents. I get in trouble at school. Uh, it was just a mess. It's crazy what you'll do when, when God isn't the center of your life. Maybe you know what it's like to wrestle with God. Maybe even to wrestle with the belief in God. And wondering if, if being a Christian is even worth it. I don't know about you guys, but I'm a very skeptical person. And after my grandma died, after I watched her die, I couldn't trust God after that. You know, thinking back on it years later, um, I think the wrestle for me was actually believing that God was real and that God was good and that God had actually had a plan for me. My life was so chaotic that I couldn't hear or see God at all. In 1 Kings 19, uh, there's a prophet named Elijah. And you know, I actually relate to Elijah so much. My story obviously isn't the same as Elijah's, but the way he felt is often the way that I've felt and the way that I, I feel. 1 Kings 19 verses 11 to 12 says, Go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Then a great and powerful wind tore the mountains apart and shattered the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind there was an earthquake. The Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake came a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire came a gentle whisper. Have you ever felt like God where are you? Are you even here, God? Like, where are you? Elijah was up on this mountain called Mount Sinai, and there was chaos surrounding him, like literally surrounding him. There's a storm just going crazy around him. And Elijah can't hear God. Elijah's like, why did you bring me to this place if I can't hear you? Why can't, why can't I see you? Why can't I feel you're there? I think often we expect God to speak in a loud, booming voice. Like we expect God to just come down and tell us exactly where to go in this loud voice that we're like, okay, yes, I'm going. And in verse 12, it says, after the fire came a gentle whisper. Hearing God doesn't mean you're supposed to hear a loud voice yelling at you. Hearing God sometimes means just to listen for the whisper. All the times that I've, I've felt closest to God lay like during chaos, during chaotic times. The first time I experienced the supernatural power of the Holy Spirit um, was actually the day I got baptized. Uh, that was in 2015. I was actually sitting at a baptism service with my parents at FAC, the 630 service. And I remember the pastor at the front said, okay, if you want to get baptized, come up to the front. And I remember thinking to myself, this is going to be a long service. We're going to be here for a while. So I'm thinking that and <laughs> People are getting up there, getting baptized, and I'm sitting there, and I feel my heart pounding, and I feel sweat coming down, and I'm literally shaking. And I heard a voice, a quiet voice saying, you need to go up there. And I was like, no, I I'm not going up there, no. I remember hearing that voice again, you need to go up there. And I was like, are you kidding me? No. I felt the voice just getting just stronger and stronger and I had to actually grab my chair because I felt like I was going to get up and, and the Holy Spirit was just so powerful in that moment and, and I got up and I walked up to the front and that was the day I got baptized. I thought the wrestling would end. A couple of years later, I was a cabin leader at a camp called Camp Hermadden and I remember it was the Saturday night that like last day of the camp. There was this boy, this junior high boy, and he hurt his hand in one of the wide games. And I looked at his hand and it bruised. It was purple, it was black, it was all cut up. Um, and I remember uh, I was asked to pray for him. And in my head, I'm like, 
are you kidding me? And I don't know how to pray for healing over someone. But of course I was like, oh sure, I'd love to pray for him. But in my head, I'm like, oh my gosh. Go outside onto the deck and we start praying for him. We start um, just asking God to heal him. And this was the second time in my life that I felt the supernatural presence of the Holy Spirit. When we were praying, that was the first time I ever spoke in tongues. When we were praying, that was the first time I, I've ever seen an angel surrounding me. I saw a literal angel just shining around me while we're praying it. <laughs> to this day, I, I think it was one of the most beautiful moments of my life, or praying and God is just, just doing amazing things in this time. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this is crazy. I don't even know what in the world I prayed that night. All I know was that God healed this boy's hand and he gave his life to Jesus that night. And it was the coolest night ever. You know, after that night, I thought to myself, okay, no more wrestling. I think I'm done wrestling. This is, this is, this is real. God's for sure real. That was, that was the proof I needed. Do you know what guys? Life didn't get easier after that. I still had bad days. I, I still had really, really hard days. You know, Jacob said to God, I won't let you go unless you bless me. And I don't know about you guys, but I don't want to let go. I don't want to let go of God. Even when he blesses me, I still don't want to let go. And my prayer for you is that you don't want to let go either. When I feel God's blessing, I don't want to leave his presence. Just because I got what I want, I don't want to leave. Because God gave me the peace, I don't want to say, okay, bye God. I want to stay with God. I want to stay in his presence. You know, wrestling in your life is going to happen happen for me it'll still happen for me it still happens it happens for all of us wrestling will happen but wrestling makes you grow when we learn to listen for the whisper and we learn not to let go of his grip peace will come i still wrestle with god and for me and my walk with the lord wrestling has actually built so much intimacy between the father and i when i have questions god meets me with grace i want to encourage you today don't be afraid to wrestle don't be afraid to question. God will meet you with grace because he met me at my worst and he changed me for the better. You know, I often hear the saying, I'm thankful for my past because it's maybe who I am today. I will never say that. I will never say I'm thankful for my past and the bad things that have happened for they've made me who I am today. The bad things that have happened in my past haven't made me who I am today. God is the one who made me who I am today. I personally am not thankful for the bad things that have happened in my past. I don't want to go through them again. I don't want to experience them again. What I am thankful for is that I have a God that loves me enough to pull me out of that. We need to always give God the glory for who we are because God is so good. God is so good. I'm thankful that I have a God who passionately loves me when I'm at my worst. I'm thankful that we have a God that passionately loves us. God bless you guys.